Hello. I was hunting with my buddy Ed when he says, e, how about a video on finding your boinks in a mess? And then people could mark it and optimize how to load their boinks. Or finally settle the debate on whether standing raises or lowers the center of gravity. I said, Ed, you cunt. No one's persnickety enough to watch a video about that. But when a friend takes you hunting... <laughs> Say Ed's motorcycle weighs 546 pounds. Maybe 194 of them are down over here. Maybe 292 are up around here. Maybe 22 of them are just in this saddlebag of Marmite. I don't know. But the center of mass is the point where we can ignore all that. Average it out and treat this entire nasty system as one 546 pound point in space. If Chuck Norris were to pick the motorcycle up from that point, he could move it around, hit a bunch of bumps, flip it over, and it wouldn't lean or pitch or yaw, it would stay perfectly balanced. The reason we care is that any weight added to that center of mass won't affect how the motorcycle behaves. It'll turn into a corner as well as the manufacturer intended, float the front, jack the rear, but any luggage put on elsewhere does affect the handling. So prop your bike perfectly upright with a scale under one wheel and a puck of equal height under the other. Now you'd agree that the ground pushes with some force under the rear wheel and under the front. We'll call those FR and FF and the distance between them D. Now I hope you're following along, Ed, because no one else will be. The weight of the motorcycle, W, can be said to act on that single point, that center of mass that we're looking for, which is some distance X in front of the rear axle and some height Y above it. Now this motorcycle is not floating up to the ceiling or sinking down into the earth, so we know FR plus plus FF must be equal to W. And since it's not rearing up like a horsey, we know that FF times by its moment arm D must be equal to W times its moment arm X. So X then is just the weight on the front tire times D divided by the total weight. So 29.9 inches in front of the rear axle is our center of mass. Ed, it's kind of in the middle of your motorcycle. But I admit that this is fun to know precisely. And if you wanted to be millimeter perfect, you would center your tank bag on that line. I like SW Motex Pro Line for that reason. Their ring mounts are located to an adjustment panel. So you can move the bag fore or aft to get the weight in the optimal spot. The male end also mounts on two nuts, looks cleaner than a strap-on, and I've never broken one off even when riding hard. Saying that without making a dick joke is proof that people really can grow and mature. The bag also extends to 12 inches, which is really more than anyone needs. Now the more contentious question, how high on this line is our center of mass, and does standing or sitting meaningfully change it? And we have the same free body diagram as before, just at some angle we'll call theta, and some height of the front wheel we'll call h. Now obviously this puts a lot more weight on the rear wheel. That's the point. That difference is how we'll determine where our center of mass sits. But we only need to measure the lighter front wheel weight. So a normal bathroom scale will still suffice. There's no need to run out and buy a special American one or anything. We want to balance the bike from tilting this way versus tilting this way. So FF multiplies on D cos theta, and W multiplies on X cos theta minus Y sine theta, where theta is just the inverse sine of H over D. So Y then is x minus ff d over w cos theta over sine theta. And if saying that just docks the name of Elon's new baby, please don't cancel me. I promise to never say it again with this Google Sheet. Just plug in your measurements, hit enter, and it spits the height of your center of mass without ever having to utter the formula. I think this is quite a valuable resource, so I put a free link down below. No need to invade our country or anything. In the case of this nearly empty R1200GS, we are centered at 8.8 .8 inches above the rear axle. It's kind of cool to know. It'd be nice if all manufacturers put a little mark at the center of gravity. BMW at least should want the world to know that their boxer engines lower it that far. Now for the coup de grace. Five out of ten dentists say sit. It'll keep your body mass lower. The other five say stand. That transfers your weight to the foot pegs, lowering the center of gravity even further.
<laughs> Sitting has it here, standing has it here. So riding around like Poltaras actually raises your center of gravity. The reason standing up feels more secure is precisely because you're moving your body mass further from the roll axis. And when mass is far from the roll axis, it resists bumpy changes in direction. If you like playing with engineering ideas at home, you can do so with one click on our sponsor's website. Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon can read the RFID in their filament spools. Choosing the ideal settings for, say, a carbon strength puck, the precise height of my scale, or a chassis plug for my 82 Silverwing that Honda has neglected to keep in production. 3D printers got an unjustified bad rap because motorcyclists kept printing M8 bolts, then complaining when their handlebars sheared off. But consumables like frame sliders make much more sense, especially custom ones, as do low load-bearing parts like this chain slider, this throttle hand rest, or these replacements for the OEM cable clips that crack every time you open a shop manual. In those cases, my 3D printed part is actually stronger. Here I'm using PPACF, a carbon reinforced nylon that has a stiffness modulus similar to lead. All of which I printed for $8 in filament. Now please don't buy a thing if you don't see the use case for a curvy, made on demand oil funnel to match the line of your engine case. But if printing this type of thing does give you joy, you could click the link below. Thanks for watching. But when a friend takes you hunting,